Hey, what is up guys? Code with Berg here and over the last few weeks I have been testing out Swift UI and I just wanted to share with you guys how I made this circular progress bar. So the idea for this actually came from a video by Let's Build That App where he made pretty much the exact same progress bar except it was for UI kit. And I couldn't find anything similar for how to make this in Swift UI, so here it is. I will leave a link in the description below to his video as well if you want to check that out. So let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. We will use a single view app. I'm just going to name mine Circular Progress. And make sure the language is set to Swift and we want the Swift UI interface. Hit next and create. So the first thing we need to do is create our color extension so that we can create a custom color scheme for the app. So we can go file, new, file, and we're gonna need a Swift file. I'm just gonna name this extensions and hit create. Now we can say extension color then we need a static function RGB that will take in three values, R, G, and B, which are all of type double. And it's going to return a color. So return color. Red will be R over 255, green will be G over 255, and blue will be B over 255. Each RGB value can have a light level between 0 and 255, which is why we use that number here. So we need to set these R, G, and B variables for each of our elements in the app. So if we go back and look at the finished app, we have this dark background, this track layer here, and the, the outline layer that shows our progress, and this pulsating circle layer. So I used coolors.co to create my color scheme, and you can see if we click on adjust, we can see what we need to set our red, green, and blue values to. So the background is red 21, green 22, and blue 33. So if we go back into our project, after this function, we can say static let background color equal color.rgb, and then we'll set these values to 21, 22, and 33. I forgot we also have to get rid of this import foundation and just replace that with import Swift UI. And that should fix our errors. And now we can create our other colors. I'll just speed this part up and at the end you can pause if you want to copy the same colors that I used. So now that we're done that, let's go back to content view and start to set up our application. So the first thing we will do is set the background color to the color we declared in our extensions file. So we can say var body, which is sum view. And since we will be stacking elements on top of each other, we can create a Z stack, then set color, to dot background color. Now if you hit preview you can see there are these safe areas with white spaces. To get rid of that we can just say dot edges ignoring safe area and then set that to dot all. So the first thing we will create is our text label to show our percentage. So struct label which is a view then we need a var percentage, 
which is a CG float value, and we'll set that equal to zero. And now we can say var body, which is some kind of a view, create another Z stack. And then we need text, and this will be a string. And we're going to set the format so that there are zero decimal places. So percent dot zero F. And then we're going to pass in the percentage. Then we can say dot font. And we want a system font of size 65. And then I'm also going to set the font weight to heavy. So dot heavy. And since initially the color is black, I'm just going to invert the color to white so that it shows up better on our dark background. So we have some text that displays our percentage as a whole number. And now we just need to add it to the content view. So go inside this Z stack. And we'll need to create a V stack inside of that. And then another Z stack inside of that V stack. That will hold the different layers of the progress bar. And now we can just say label. If we preview this, we can now see the label on the canvas. So next is the outline view here, which will show us our progress. So under the label struct, we can say struct outline, which is a view. We also need to create a percentage variable here. So we can just copy and paste the same one from above here. Next, we need to be able to use our outline color. So var colors. And in square brackets, we'll say color equals. And then in square brackets again, color dot outline color. And now we can create the body. So var body, which is some kind of a view. Since we need an animation with more than one layer, we can use a Z stack here. Then we'll create a circle shape with a dot fill of color dot clear. and then set the frame to 250 by 250. And then we need to overlay another circle. So dot overlay, open parentheses, and then we'll start a new line here. Create our circle with a dot trim from zero. to our percentage times 0 0.01. So this zero means our starting point for the animation, so there would be no progress showing. And it'll go all the way up to one where the progress bar will be full. Since we are going to pass in a percentage, we can multiply by 0 0.01 to get the decimal form of that percentage. So next we need a dot stroke with style stroke style and we want line width uh, we can just use autocomplete here and we'll also remove these last three because we won't need them so set the line width to 20 the line cap to dot round and the line join to dot round so let's see what we have so far. So we can add outline to the Z stack in content view, and then we'll build out our preview. Okay, so now we just need to set our fill. So dot fill, which will be an angular gradient with a gradient of and we'll say dot in it and colors will set to the colors that we created up here our center will be the dot center 
will have a start angle of dot zero and an end angle of 360 degrees. So dot in it degrees 360. And now we can set our animation to dot animate. We want a spring animation with a response time of two, a damping fraction of one, and a blend duration of one. Now, if we just go here and change the percentage variable to 50%, when we run our preview, you'll be able to see the progress bar filling to half of the circle. So there we go. So let's just change that back to zero for now, and we can start working on this track layer underneath the progress bar. And then we'll build out this pulsating layer in behind. So under outline, we can create another struct. This one will be the track. So all we need to declare here is our track color. Then in the body, we need another Z stack. And we'll create a circle that has a dot fill of color dot background color. Now we want this to be the same as the background color to hide the pulsating layer and keep everything looking nice. So we want the frame to be the same as the outline of 250 by 250. Then we need a dot overlay of another circle. And this one will have a dot stroke with a style of stroke style. And for this one, we just need a line width and we'll set that to 20. Because we want this to be the same as our outline layer. Then a dot fill of an angular gradient with a gradient of the color that we declared, our track stroke color, and a center of dot center. Now we can add our track view under our label and content view. Otherwise the label will be hidden by this. And if we run our canvas again, we can see that we now have our track layer. So now all we really have left to do is create the pulsating layer. So under the track, we can create another struct for pulsation. In this one, we need a state private variable, and we'll name that pulsate, and we'll initially set this to false. Then we need our pulsating color. So we'll just import that here. Then var body, which will be some view. Create another Z stack, and another circle shape with a dot fill of our pulsating color a dot frame with a width of 245 and a height of 245, which is just slightly inside of our other layers so it can sort of disappear in behind them very briefly. We need a dot scale effect, and that will be of pulsate, and we want that to go between 1.3 and 1.1 because we want that circle to grow in scale and then shrink back down. Now we can say dot animation, animation dot ease in out, and we want a duration of 1.1. We also want this to repeat forever, and we can set auto reverses to true. Then when the view appears, we want to toggle this pulsate variable, which will switch between 1.3 and 1.1. 1 
So let's add this to our content view and build our preview again. Then hit run. And there we go. So now we just need to pass in a percentage to the label and outline. So to do this, I'm going to go back in here and create a button with an action. And let's actually command click on this button and we'll hit embed in an H stack. So the action that we need is to set the state var percentage to 85. This could be whatever percentage you want, but I'm just using 85 as an example. So self dot percentage equals a CG float of 85. And we want our button to be an image rather than just text. And we'll set that to the system image of play.circle.fill. And we want that to be resizable. So we'll set the frame to a, a width of 65 and a height of 65. The aspect ratio to content mode dot fit. And the foreground color to dot white. And to add some space in between these, I'm just going to add a spacer right above the H stack here. See how that looks. And we'll need to add one above the Z stack as well. That looks better. So now that we set our percentage variable here to 85, we still need to pass it into the label and the outline so that they can update their percentage values. So inside these parentheses, we can say percentage and we will pass in the state var percentage. So this right here sets this to 85 and we pass that variable into this percentage variable. And we'll do the same with the outline. And now we can run the preview and everything should work as it's supposed to. So now if we hit play, you can see the animation runs and everything looks great. And that wraps it up. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, be sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.